Okay, Junbei's doing some deduction. Huh? No, it's just... I guess I didn't really think about it until right now. Because bracelet's off, that means he's dead. Well, it's pretty obvious that he's dead. You don't really need to look at his bracelet to figure that out. Yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. It is kind of obvious. What with, you know, the massive scars... <laughs> and his eyes constantly, like, open... And the smell... And etc, etc. He looks a lot better than the other bodies we've seen, though, you know? You know, like your brother. Remember how he exploded and looked like a big batch of... Marinara sauce just went flying everywhere. Oh, that was some fun times. I mean, if there wasn't all this blood, he almost looked like he was still alive. I mean, I know it's kind of a messed up thing to say, but he kind of has it better, you know? Than people like your brother. Ooh. Dying from a bomb going off inside you. I mean, that's just... Some of Snake's bones went right through his skin! Jeez! <laughs> <laughs> this is just the worst thing to say to Clover. I think the explosion might have thrown him against a wall or something. There was a broken bone just sticking out of his left arm. Suddenly, Junpei realized what he was saying. How could he have been so cruel? He clapped his hands over his mouth. <laughs> oh, God. You're a real jerk, you know that, Junpei? <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> I'm such a jerk. It was already too late. He turned around and looked at Clover. She was glaring at him furiously. What did you just say? Her words sounded cold. He knew an apology could hardly atone for what he'd done, but he tried anyway. <laughs> oh, man. Ah, <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, well, uh, this is an awkward situation. Hey. Oh man, I, 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 I'm I so sorry. I shouldn't have said that. Me and my big mouth. I really don't know what I was saying. I, I, I don't really have any control over like what I say, what I do. You really just shouldn't take me seriously. I know I don't take me seriously, so you shouldn't either. No. That's not what I'm talking about. What do you say about his arm? Arm? Yeah, his left arm. You said it, didn't you? Well, yeah, I did, but... I mean, didn't you see it too? Of course not! I can barely look at him! He's my fucking brother! I didn't want to see his fucking mingled corpse, you insensitive dickwad! Clover took a quick, deep breath. Are you sure it was his left arm? Junbei thought back. Memories! Sweet memories! Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. And he had a broken bone, right? What the hell are you getting at here? Just shut up and answer me! She shoved her face closer to his. He could see the fire in her eyes. Junpei winced and swallowed. Yeah, you did. It's pretty bad, too. The bone was sticking out of the arm. No sooner were the words out of his mouth than Clover's expression changed. Suddenly, she was crying. Jume wasn't sure what to do. Thank you. It was close to the last thing he had expected to hear. Jume had no idea what had just happened. Well, that's not usual. He didn't think he'd done anything worthy of thanks, and he couldn't understand why she would have chosen that moment to begin crying. So yeah, uh, she figured out that a uh, snake ain't dead. Yet. Da -da -dum. So he simply stood there, confused. Thank you, Jim Pei. She thanked him again, and then something even stranger happened. Yeah, he got to first base, I think. What's first base these days? I don't know. Clover threw herself into Jim Pei's surprised arms. Hey, what's going on with you? I'm sorry, it's just... <laughs> I'm so happy! Why? The body in the shower room! It... It isn't his! It isn't my brother! Huh? It's not Snake! Why on earth would you think that? Because his left arm is... 
She stopped herself. I'm sorry. I, I, I really shouldn't be talking about this. And Junbei decided it'd be prudent not to press her for any more information. That's wrong. That's incorrect. You should probably press her. She did not wish to tell him. She certainly had a reason for doing so. Perhaps more importantly, however, if Clover was so certain, then she likely was right. That meant that the body in the shower room wasn't Snake. It wasn't much, but that knowledge lifted some of the weight from Junbei's heart. He's still alive. I'm... I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Tears shone in her eyes. Those tears melted Junpei's heart. As she cried, she had pushed herself up against his chest like a child. Junpei put his arms around her and held her tightly. Junpei, you're right. I was? That was the first time for everything. No matter what happens, you can never lose hope. You have to remember what's most important, and that's to have faith and to have love. If you can remember all of those, that'll bring you good luck. Well, I wouldn't go about saying that you have good luck yet, Clover. Uh, don't count your chickens before they hatch. Clover reached into her pocket and pulled something out. I'm really wondering if Clover's still going to die in this universe. I hope she doesn't. He's sort of been shit upon this entire fucking game. I wanted to catch at least one break. Was a laminated bookmark with a four-leaf clover. I, I only made it here because you gave me this. I was suspicious of everybody. I was angry and miserable because I had this four-leaf clover. Because of what you had said to me, I... I, I... Junbei hadn't thought his words would have su had such an effect on her. Her words are making him feel a little awkward. Thank you so much, Junpei. She looked up at him. He scratched his nose and pretended to notice something interesting somewhere else in the room. Suave. Oh, well, if you really want to thank somebody, you should be thanking Santa. Santa? Well, he was the one that gave me that thing. And the words for each leaf, I got that from him too. Ellipses! Okay, so we had just single ellipses from Clover, then single ellipses from me, then another single ellipses from Clover, and now three ellipses and a question mark. Well, this is different. Then suddenly, Clover broke away from Jimmy. <laughs> I'm not as inspirational as she thought. I'm really a hack. Huh? He looked confused. He hadn't thought she'd react that poorly. Clover began to pace across the room. Six steps to the left, six steps to the right, another six to the left, and then she stopped. Did, did Santa really tell you those things? Her eyes were serious, but not angry. Yeah, he, he did. Did I uh, say something wrong? Oh no, not at all. In fact, this could be really good news, I think. Huh. You think? Santa know about the words and the clover? The only people who should know about that are the other subjects. Subjects? The other people who were in the experiment nine years ago with my brother and me. What? <clears throat> but he's blind. And I was part of the Nevada test group. So neither of us would be able to recognize the faces of the people who were on this boat. Whoa, 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 whoa. Time out. Take a penalty. I'm gonna throw up the, the yellow card or the red card or whatever card it is. I don't know. Just one of the fuck, all the fucking cards. Jimbe held up his hands. He took a deep breath and let it out. Let's just calm down for a second, okay? Start from the top. I want some fucking exposition right about now. You've been like the only character in this goddamn game who has been apprehensive to just launch into a massive exposition dump. And we need to rectify that pronto. Don't start with the end and then jump to the middle. You gotta start at one, then move to two, and three, and four, and so on. If you don't tell me stuff in the right order, I'm never gonna be able to figure it out, okay? Clover nodded. All right, let's start with this experiment. What happened on this boat nine years ago? 
Do you know what morphogenic genetic fields know about them? I love morphogenetic fields. They're my favorite type of field. Next to uh, soccer fields and um, Sid Field. He did, and the realization sent chills down June Pace's spine. All right, how about this? Theory of the telepathic mechanism. Junpei recounted what Lotus had told him earlier. Clover nodded. Hmm, telepathy, huh? Well, it's not really it, but I suppose it's similar. So they were testing telepathy on this ship? Yeah, I guess so. So what exactly did they have you guys do? The same thing that we're doing now. Exactly the same thing. What? The Nonary game. Nine people were put on this boat, and nine others were put in the building in Nevada. And the game started. Junpei grabbed the sides of his head. Oh my god, the information is too much. I can barely comprehend it. Look, I'm sorry, but I don't get it. Can you say that again, like, more slowly? What do the Nonary game and some telepathy experiment have to do with each other? Clover bit her lip. Meanwhile, Ace is just listening in, eavesdropping behind the door, going, oh shit, I'm gonna have to kill both of these fuckers. Damn it. She blinked back, sudden tears. What had happened to her in Nevada? Uh, well, you know what they say, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. The ability to access a morphogenic field is affected by a couple of things. The first is epiphany, and the other is danger. You know how sometimes when you're up against a really tough problem, and then the answer just kind of pops into your head? That's an epiphany. And what you learn from the epiphany can be transmitted with telepathy. When you add danger to that equation, it gets easier to transmit that information over telepathy. So you're saying Nonary Game is supposed to introduce that element of danger. Yeah, but... It couldn't just be any old danger. It had to be life and death. And... and... Someone did actually die. A girl. Junpei fell to the sudden group of despair on his heart. Well, talk to Monokuma. Something deep and distant and powerful squeezed. <laughs> what? And for a moment he felt very, very empty and alone. She was on the boat, my brother. I was in Nevada, so I never met her, but... I did hear her name. Her name was... Um... Um... That's a funny name. The sound of the door opening was like a gunshot. Junpei spun around. Hey, Ace! God damn it, you cock blocking son of a bitch! Oh, my apologies. I seem to have disturbed you. Ace? You motherfucker? You two must have strong stomachs. I can't imagine how you could stay in this room for so long. Ace glanced down at the floor, at the corpse covered in blood. At any rate, Junpei, would you be so kind as to come and help me with something? I'm having a little trouble, and I could really use your assistance. Come on, it'll only take a moment. With that, he turned and walked back toward the communications office. Clover waited until he was out of sight, and then spoke in a small, quiet voice. I don't want Ace to hear us. We can talk about this later. Huh? Hey, wait! Clover ignored him. From outside, Junbei could hear Ace calling. Junbei! What are you doing in there? Hurry up! Arg. Alternate reality, gang. What? Grumbling to himself, Junpei stomped off toward the communications office. Da 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 da. Uh, whoop! It's an old telegraph machine, and I'll be honest, I have no idea how it works. It's an old telegraph machine. Nothing suspicious here. What's this? Right? Yeah. Small screwdrivers. Can we unscrew this? Alright, this screwdriver ought to make short work of this music box. It looks to be a cylinder for a music box. There are a number of pins and some pieces of metal look rather like fans attached to it. Huh. Any drawers? Got some ink. A bottle of ink. It's filled with ink. And inside a bottle. 
Ba bang Great. Cool. A chair. You sit on it. It's called a chair. This is a really long cable. The tip is hooked onto one of the desk drawers. There's a pair of headphones on the desk. It looks as though that drawer is the only thing that's locked. I don't see a keyhole, though. An electric lock, perhaps. Take a look at the left side of the drawer. Yeah, there's some cables over there. That must mean... Hey, what is this? It's blank. There's nothing written on it. Hmm. A white piece of paper. It's blank. Okie dokie. There's a clock. A clock mounted on the wall. The hands aren't moving. A little surprised that the time is wrong then, I suppose. And there is nothing on the back. Well, hey, hey, it's look, it's a model of a steam train. How on earth did you arrive at that conclusion? I'm special, my mother told me so. Hey, hey, Slug, it's a monkey with glasses. Uh-huh. It's a telegraph key, a machine for transmitting Morse code. I tried sending an SOS earlier, but uh, I doubt that did anything. Zero would never make it that easy. So you think it's broken? No, it works. I'm just not sure if, if it actually transmit anything outside the stip. Huh, that's a quandary and a half right there. Hey, hey look, there's a big ass rat trap over here. I told you, that's a fucking telegraph key. I literally just told you this. God damn it, I'm surrounded by a competency. I can't wait to kill all of you fuckers. Uh, ba ba do. I can't use this. What can I do? It's just normal light. Well, it won't turn on, so maybe not that normal. Hmm. What can we do with this ink? Can we use the ink on the paper? That seems like a thing people would do. No. Okay. Uh, maybe back to the captain's corners. A bed. There's nothing in it. Okay, nothing in there. What about this, uh, yeah, is there anything in this drawer? Oh, shit. What's the deal with this? Is it some kind of code? There are four rows of numbers and letters. They all start with O and end with 8. F, N, or V, respectively. Maybe this is something to do with number bases. Fuck our number bases. Hey, isn't the door on that screen the one right behind us? You're right. So whatever that camera sees is sent to this screen in real time. I wonder if that means something, you know? Huh. Huh. I think this probably used to be a door. Nobody's going through it as long as this metal plate's here, though. Well, even without the metal plate, the death's in the way. Hmm. So we can't access any of these other drawers. No dice. It doesn't matter what I push on here. It's not working. I don't think the power's on. I gotta turn on the fucking power. There's a plaque on the door, but it doesn't say anything. Looks like whatever the camera sees shows up on the screens behind us. So yeah, if I put my hand here in front of it, it shows up on the middle top screen back there. You got a short lifeline, Junpei. Hey, mind your own business, and you should take a look at your own. Really, you should. Ugh. Uh, there's light. Do anything with the light? I don't think we can. Back in here. Home again. Look. A hook. I'm gonna turn this fucking game off. That wasn't a joke. I know, man. That's what makes it so sad. Dub, dub, doo. Okay. We gotta do something with this thing here. Telegraph key A says you use it to send messages in Morse code. Oh, 
Okay, uh, it's numeral system chart found in the captain's quarters. 10 in base 10 is written as a hexadecimal. This chart showed the rules for each numeral system. Yeah, so this is showing uh, numbers in hexadecimal, I think. But I don't know how that would help us right now. The cable that comes out of this thing is connected to the desk. What does that mean? A pair of headphones. I can't hear anything. Guess whatever they were connected to doesn't work anymore. To be honest, I have no goddamn idea what this thing really is. It's probably some kind of radio transmitter. It also kind of looks like someone who's been watching too much TV or playing too much video games. To be honest, I have no goddamn idea. It's probably some kind of radio thingy majigger and etc. Hmm. It's an old telegraph machine. Can we just fuck around with this shit? No. Aww. Hmm. Okay, can we press any other buttons? One of those things that switches what's on the screen. Let's see what happens if I flip one of these switches. Nothing. Looks like it doesn't work anymore. There's an E on this screen. There's a Z on this screen. There's an R on this screen. Oops, sorry. Still an R. And a no. There's nothing. Just static. Also just static. Uh, things have now digressed to the point where I'm just clicking on random bullshit and hoping that something progresses the puzzle. Yeah, great. Okay, so what do we got here? We got cylinder, paper, ink. Can we combine any of this? Can we combine cylinder with the paper? Make a paper cylinder. Can we combine... We can't add the ink to the paper, because why not? Maybe we can add the cylinder to the ink. Yeah, we can like uh, make a little impression or whatever. Um, I guess I'll put the ink on the cylinder. I got nothing better to do. Dirty cylinder. Oh, yeah. Now I just gotta roll the cylinder across a piece of paper. If I'm right, the ink should... Uh ho ho What is this? It's just a bunch of lines and dots. I put ink on the cylinder from the music box, and I rolled it across the paper, and I left this. It's some kind of code? I think it's probably Morse code. Oh. Morse code. Nerdy bullshit. Okay, Ace. Fire it up. Let's go. Alright, I got the Morse code I'm supposed to enter. If I do this right, something will happen. I hope. Alright, let's give this a shot. Let's go. Okay. Dot, dot, bop, 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 burp, 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 bop, bop, but damn! Okay, that's the last one, and yes! Excellent work, Junpei. Good job. You seem to have figured it out. You've unlocked the drawer. Damn, I'm good. Okay, let's open it up. What do we got? A red book, a red file lay in the drawer. Junbei reached down and picked it and picked it up. The cover read All Ice or Alice. All Ice. Alice. Did that mean Junbei couldn't hold back? He had to know what was in that file. A bunch of bullshit, apparently. Each page was covered with strange characters. Yeah, this whole game is full of strange characters, am I right? Yeah. So it's in Egyptian or hieroglyphics or some... Uh, or windings or whatever that weird font is that nobody ever uses. They look like tiny drawings of birds, snakes, insects, horned animals, wings, and even kneeling humans. There are many pages in the file and each one was full of these strange symbols. What the hell is this? He didn't realize he'd spoken out so loud until Ace looked over at him. They're hieroglyphics, a form of writing used in ancient Egypt. I learned that from Lost. Ancient Egypt? 
That's right. Can you read them? Of course. What random dude doesn't know hieroglyphics? I can't. What would make you think I could? You're a very worldly individual, aren't you, Ace? When you're not, you know, running pharmaceutical companies that like to torture children, I'm sure you're, uh, you're very, you take a lot of trips. This, uh, sentence went nowhere. What the hell? Jinbei flipped through a few more pages. It wasn't just one or two pages that were covered in the strange symbols. Every single page was covered in them. Trying to read them was pointless. Jumbe wasn't going to waste any more time with them. He made to close the file, and something fell out. He bent down and picked it up. The key card. There was a symbol on it that reminded Junbei of the symbols for the Saturn and Mercury key cards. This one, however, had a dot in the center of the male symbol. Uranus. That's the Uranus symbol. Junpei looked over to see Ace examining the card. Insert obvious bullshit hacky ass joke here. In addition to the Uranus symbol, there were three words engraved on the card as well. On the lower right, it said, Bottom Deck Library. This must be a key to the library on the bottom deck. So it would seem. The bottom deck. The library. Oh my god. Junpei remembered something he'd heard from Seven when they'd been in the chemical closet. Alice sleeps in a small chamber past the forest of knowledge, beneath the navel of the gigantic. Did beneath the navel mean the bottom deck? Did forest of knowledge mean the library? If it did, then was Alice in a room somewhere beyond the library? Okay, if I was Junpei, I would not immediately make that connection, but okay. This is how the plot has to go, let's, uh, let's not question it too much. What's wrong? Junbei blinked. Only then did he notice Ace looking at him, curiosity and concern written across his face in equal parts. There was no reason for Junbei to hide his thoughts. He began to explain his theory to Ace. Well, yeah, Ace seems like such a trustworthy, nice gentleman. I'm sure nothing bad will come out of this. Then he stopped. Wouldn't make any sense if Ace didn't know who Alice was supposed to be. So he told Ace everything June t told him about the Egyptian priestess, about Ice Nine, and finally about the woman who wouldn't melt that had been recovered from the Titanic disaster. He told him about how she had been called All Ice, which had eventually turned to Alice, and how she had been purchased by an English millionaire who called himself Lord Gordain, and how Gordain had hid Alice somewhere on the ship. And you think that he hid her in a small room beyond the library on the bottom deck. Yeah, it's so obvious, I mean, come on. I see. Ace stared off at the distance, his hand slowly and absentmindedly stroking his beard. After a few moments, his hand stopped. He turned slowly to look at Junpei, and his brows drew together. Junpei, have you ever heard of the term C-A-S? Yes. It stands for Cells Alive Syndrome. It is an advanced technology for freezing and preserving organic matter. Put simply, it is a technique that allows one to freeze things without the formation of ice crystals. Normally, if you freeze something fresh, water within its cells expands as it crystallizes, damaging the cell membrane. Cass, however, works differently. I'm just not going to use the voice for this because this is just a lot of... Exposition, dump, dump, dump. The object to be frozen is super cooled using magnetic fields. I love the magnetic fields. 69 Love Songs is a great album. Then frozen instantly and uniformly, giving ice crystals no time to feel a form. It was originally developed for the preservation of food as an alternative to the normal freezing process. Now, however, there are rumors it can be used for other things. What do you mean, other things? Well, there are obvious medical uses, but perhaps also space travel. Space travel? Are you serious? Surely you've heard of suspended animation, cryogenic freezing. Oh shit! Is Alice gonna be alive, or when you get down there and like chisel her out like a caveman, and then get a hair dryer? Ah, uh, that'd be cool. That'd be so fucking goofy, but it'd be cool too. 
It's a fairly common idea in science fiction books and films, and uh, also science fiction anime games. People are sometimes frozen for especially lengthy journeys through space. That was when Junpei understood what Ace was suggesting. Whoa, 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 wait a minute there. Hold your horses there, buckaroo. Ace looked at him and raised an eyebrow. Are you saying that Ace was frozen using that, um, cast thing? Well, I'm sure the possibility is quite low, but it is a possibility. If this special ice you call Ice Nine does indeed exist, and if Cass were used to freeze her in some sort of that ice instantaneously and then fr frozen thing, do you think she could be alive? Well, I can't say for sure, of course. I'm only really talking about possibilities. The melting point for Ice Night is 96 degrees, right? If she were put somewhere where she could reach that temperature. That's nuts! Are you really saying she could have defrosted and started walking about? You're quite right, it does sound unbelievable. But if she had, then we would have an explanation for the man we found dead on the floor. You mean the guy dressed as a captain? Yes. You think a frozen Egyptian woman killed him? That's your theory. Really, that's what you're going with, Ace. That's what you want us to believe. Okay. Sure. Why not? Let's just say a frozen Egyptian woman killed him. Why not? I mean, I've seen crazier episodes of Law & Order SVU, so I guess it's a possible solution. Clearly, he was murdered. But if he was murdered, then by who? It couldn't have been one of us. That would be impossible. In order to enter the captain's quarters, one must first open door one. That door requires the earth key prevented us... The door that requires the earth key prevented us from accessing door one. Who was it that opened that door? Santa and Lotus. Right. Clearly, the two of them could not have opened door one or any other door for that matter. Who else, then, could have done so? Zero? Zero! The answer is zero. Zero could have killed him. Zero sets this whole entire fucking thing up. He could have killed him. 